What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Cincinnati Reds franchise. And here we are. We're going to be getting into the professional debut of Marco Bautista. Kind of a quick start to the video, but it's something that I am definitely excited about to see him for the very first time in a Reds affiliate uniform, the Chattanooga Lookouts here, as it is opening day here at the AA level. And this is a guy that we drafted who we know a few things about. We know that he's not the greatest defender. He's not going to have the greatest arm. He's not going to have the greatest arm accuracy or the greatest fielding ability, but he is going to have really good contact and he's going to have really good speed. And that is something that we truly do like about him. The contact is going to be good, but the power will definitely be lacking. We have him out here in left field for this game against Birmingham. And a little bit of uh, his outfielding skills here on display. If he doesn't have to run very far to the ball, he will probably be pretty good. But we had no issues in this game as his fielding looked pretty decent. So here he is, first time at the plate. I had to go in and edit his batting stance because he had a former player's batting stance. And I just think it's unique to give him a generic batting stance. And here's what I came up with. I think it looks pretty good. I didn't customize it at all, but here are his first at bat. He's going to ground to short, and it's going to be an error on the shortstop. I thought that this was probably going to be ruled an infield single. Instead, it was ruled an error as it bounced off of the shortstop's wrist. Here he is again out in the field, and this one's pretty easy because this one was hit right at him. He didn't even have to move. Uh, I did adjust him with the con uh, controller, so it did look a little weird. But here he is now, top three out in the field again, his third opportunity to make a play. And this one, he's going to have to range backwards. He's running back, and he is going to camp underneath of it for out number three. So Marco Bautista showing off some pretty good fielding skills so far. Here's bottom four, his second at bat. He's batting leadoff for us here in double A opening days. He's going to line this right at the first baseman. What a play by the Birmingham first baseman. So Marco Bautista off to an 0 for 2 start here in his first professional game. Here he is now, third at bat, bottom sixth inning. And he's going to send this one up the middle. And that is exactly what we like out of a guy like Marco Bautista. Strong contact, take it right up the middle. We, want, we don't necessarily need the doubles and home runs, but we want to see that hard contact on a pretty often, you know, pretty often. So Marco Bautista with his first hit at the double A level. Here he is trying to steal second, and he will slide in there safely as he beats the throw for his first stolen base. So Marco Bautista making a great impression here in his first game as Cam Collier will ground out to first to end the inning. Cam Collier, a guy who nearly could have made the MLB roster but did not perform well enough in the spring. Here we are, bottom eight now for Bautista as he sends this one to left center field as this one's going to get down in the gap and Bautista's going to stretch this single into what is going to be ruled a single but he was in there for a double as he's going to finish the day with two hits as we drop the first game to Birmingham. But that definitely should have been ruled a double but it was, a, it was ruled a single on the scorecard, I don't know why. He was clearly into second before the runner was thrown out at home. But Marco Bautista, a two-hit performance, looked pretty good in the field. Nothing to really complain about out there, as I thought that he definitely showed off the characteristics that we knew he had. We knew he had speed, and we knew he had great contact. So here we are. Matt McClain is no longer injured, so Matt McClain will be making his MLB debut in this game against the Pittsburgh Pirates. We're going to send down Christian Encarnacion Strand, uh, so that way we can make room for McLean. But here we are, our City Connect debut in this franchise. As the Cincinnati Reds just debuted them not too long ago in real life, they found their way into the game, and now we are using them for the very first time in this series. And what a better way to start than having Matt McLean make his Major League debut in the best uniforms that we got. So here's a look at our top 10 prospects. Ellie De La Cruz will soon be off of that list because he has been called up. But you have guys like Marco Bautista, Cam Collier, Noelvi Marte, Edwin Arroyo, who are all in the top 50 MLB prospects. And then Chase Petty, Thomas Wolfe, and Ryan Galvin, all in the top 100. Then you have Charlie Cruz and Felipe Campaneras at 9 and 10 for us. I don't know if you guys saw during the opening day video. Actually, it might be in this gameplay. We have the number one rated farm system in Major League Baseball, so that is something to definitely look forward to. As we have Nick Lodolo on the mound for his second start on the season. Key Brian Hayes leading it off for the Pittsburgh Pirates. 2-2 count early on. Here's the pitch from Lodolo, and this one is down the left field line. This one gets down, and that will allow Key Brian Hayes to stroll into second with a leadoff double 
for the Pirates as Fraley had a little bit of trouble getting to it out there at the wall. Don't think it really would have mattered. Here's Rafael L. I think it's Latigua, but I don't want to mess it up. But there's a strikeout for Nick Lodolo, his first strikeout of the day. Here's Brian Reynolds batting 273 on the year. And he'll send this one up the middle. And this one will score. Key Brian Hayes as the Pittsburgh Pirates will take an early one to nothing lead here on this beautiful evening of baseball. If you saw there, Matt McClain is starting out in center field for his MLB debut. O'Neill Cruz goes down looking for out number two as Nick Lodolo has two strikeouts here on the inning, but he's allowed two hits. Here's Rodolfo Castro. He sends this one in the right field as Stuart Fairchild gets the ball in quickly to limit Brian Reynolds from stretching it to third. Here's Matt Frazier now, 0-2 count, and he goes down swinging for strike number three. Three strikeouts for Lodolo, but he allowed three hits in return as the Pittsburgh Pirates have taken a one to nothing lead here. And how will the Cincinnati Reds offense bounce back? Here's Mitch Keller on the mound today. He's 1-0 on the season with a 6.0 ERA. Here's his second start as well. In his first start, he threw six innings and had six strikeouts. Here's Ellie De La Cruz batting 240 on the season. Still without a home run. And I have struggled to definitely hit with him on this season. 3-2 count to start. And he goes down swinging as the fastball is blown by him at 98 miles per hour. And that's the first strikeout for Keller. Here's Gio Urshela now batting 348 on the season. And this is a hanging curveball crushed to left field. It is tied here at Great American Ballpark. Gio Urshela sends this one deep to left field. His second home run on the season. 397 feet off the bat. And what a way to bounce back in the bottom of the first. Gio Urshela finally making an impact here in spring training. It felt like, not that I struggled hitting with him, but he didn't really feel like he added too much. Here he is starting at second today due to the injury to Jonathan India. And he was patient and he got that curveball, a breaking curveball, and he crushed it. 107 miles per hour off the bat, a 4.81 second hang time, and a 21 degree launch angle. Here's Tyler Stevenson now, 3 2 count, and he goes down looking. Mitch Keller with his second strikeout of the inning, as both pitchers allowing one run but getting the strikeouts in return. Here's CJ Crone now, 3 0 count. Crone sends this one into deep right center field. It was hit well off the bat, but the right fielder camps underneath of it for out number three. So the Reds. Answer back to the Pirates' top of the first run as this one is tied one to nothing. One to one, I should say. Can't be tied if it's one to nothing. Here we are, top second. Now it's Nick Gonzalez at the plate, and he goes down swinging on the circle change. Nick Lodolo's first four outs have been strikeouts. Here's Julio Alicio now. He's batting 286 as he's going to hit this one hard to Gio Urshela. He throws on to CJ Crone to end the top half of the second. Here's Jake Fraley now. Has not recorded a hit this season. As he sends this one deep to left center field, this one is definitely going to be ruled a hit as this one bounces off the wall and Jake Fraley is in there with the leadoff double to get the bottom of the second started. Finally, Jake Fraley with his first hit on the season. Here's Jesse Winker to the plate. He grounds this one hard to second and that will advance the runner to third with one out now. Jesse Winker here has yet to do any damage offensively since coming back here to Cincinnati. Here is Spencer Steer. He sends this one to center field, and this one is going to allow Jake Fraley to tag up, and he slides in safe to give the Reds a 2-1 to -one lead here in the bottom of the second. Spencer Steer has been on a tear to start this season. Here's Matt McClain now in his MLB debut, and he sends this one deep to left center field. It was hit well off the bat, but it is going to die down. Right before the warning track is Brian Reynolds makes the catch. And that will end the bottom half of the second. Reds lead 2-1. to one. Here's Rafael Latigua. And he is going to apparently be hit by the pitch. Did not even look like he was hit by the pitch. But he was. Brian Reynolds now. One for one on the day. Sends this one to Steer. Steer will throw over to Urshela. On the first. And it's a double play for the Cincinnati Reds. Spencer Steer has been really good to start this season. Here's Henry Davis now. The highly touted catcher as he hit, sends this one to deep left field and this one's off the wall and Fraley's going to get this one in quickly and that will limit Henry Davis to just a single, a very loud, hard hit single. 
as the Reds have, no, the Pirates have a leadoff runner here in the top of the fifth. And Julio Alicio goes down swinging. I believe that says Alicio, not Alicio, right? Here's Key Brian Hayes now, one down. And Henry Davis is going to try and steal, and he's out by a mile. That was clearly supposed to be a hit and run attempt, but Key Brian Hayes didn't hit the ball. So 3 2 count now to Key Brian Hayes. Two away, and he goes down looking. A strikeout for Nick Lodolo as he has worked his way through five innings. He's been really good aside from the first inning. Here's Spencer Steer now batting 474 on the season, and he's going to send this one up the middle. Another hit for Spencer Steer. He came into this game with three home runs, which led the NL. And he's one for one on today's game. As Mitch Keller is still working here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Here's Matt McClain. He's going to send this one into very shallow center field. And the second baseman is there to make the play for out number two. So Matt McClain still without a hit here in his MLB debut. Here's Stuart Fairchild now. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Somebody that we really like. Batting ninth is where he is today. Here's the pitch, and Fairchild sends this one deep to right field. Does it have enough to get out? It does. A two-run home run for Stuart Fairchild, his second home run of the season. It only went 371 feet, but it was just enough to send it over the wall for that two-run home run that the Reds needed to extend this lead. Stuart Fairchild has been really good this season. I think he's an everyday player for us this season, you know, and it kind of makes me curious what we're going to do at center field because Nick Senzel has been off to a rough start this season. Stuart Fairchild has not. Here's Ellie De La Cruz now, bottom fifth. He's 0 for 2 on the day, and he goes down, swinging for his third strikeout of the day. But Stuart Fairchild is the important person of the inning as he sent that one deep to right field to give the Reds a 4-1 to one lead here through five innings. He's been really good this season. Could we potentially move him over to center field? Do we keep him in right field? We'll have to figure it out. Here's Rafael Latigua as he's going to send this one up the middle for a leadoff hit to start the sixth inning. I hope I am saying his name correctly. Lantigua, I believe is how you say it. But leadoff runner, top six, 0-2 count to Reynolds. He goes down swinging as this another strikeout for Nick Lodolo, his ninth of the day. Of the day. Here's O'Neill Cruz. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Hits it back up to Lodolo. What an athletic play on the first, but O'Neill Cruz is in there safely at first. No double play. Here's Rodolfo Castro. He goes down swinging. The 10th strikeout for Nick Lodolo. Somebody get some water because he's on fire. Here's Nick Gonzalez now, top 7, and he's going to send this one in the gap. Fairchild's not going to get there, and this one's going to be down for extra bases. Fairchild eventually gets to the ball, and Gonzalez is trying to get a triple, and he's thrown out. What a relay for the Cincinnati Reds defense. Everything about this Reds team has been very good as Stuart Fairchild's having himself a day. The offense has been good. The defense has been good. Surprisingly, the only part that hasn't been great is our pitching, but they're middle of the pack. Here's Henry Davis now, two away through six and two-thirds as Lodolo is going to field the comebacker, throw it on the crone, and he is through seven innings of work, allowing only one earned run. Here's Jesse Winker now. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Here's the pitch, foul ball. 0-1 count now, Jesse Winker. Like I said, he has not brought that explosive offense back to Cincinnati yet. But he sends this one deep to center field. Maybe he just did it, and it is... Gone, Jesse Winker with his first home run back in the Cincinnati Reds uniform. He sent that one 412 feet. What a hit for Jesse Winker, the third home run for the Cincinnati Reds offense on the day. We haven't had to have a lot of hits in this game. We just need to have home runs. Now, you don't want to turn into a home run reliable offense. You know, you want to produce better offense. You want to produce walks and base hits but if you're only hitting home runs what can you say here's Matt McClain now bottom seventh he's 0 for 2 in his MLB debut and he is going to walk so a base runner aboard for Cincinnati with two away here in the seventh inning as Stuart Fairchild comes to play he homered earlier it was a two-run homer what can he do this time McClain trying to swipe second and he is in there safely as he's going to have his first career stolen base 
So he walked, and now he has gotten his first stolen base of his career. Here's Fairchild, 3-1 count, and he sends this one hard to center field, but the center fielder, Brian Reynolds, is there to make the play for out number three. Jesse Winker with the solo shot to give the Reds a 5-1 lead. Five runs off of five hits in this game. Got to definitely be impressed with the way that the offense has performed. Here we are, top eight now for Nick Lodolo as he stays in and gets the strikeout on Alicio. The 11th strikeout for Nick Lodolo as he has been dealing since the first inning. Here's Lantigua. He's going to send this one in the gap, and this is going to be down for a single. Lantigua does not have Lati Lantigua does not have great hitting attributes, but he's gotten it done today. This one's hit to Urshela. He fields it cleanly on to Crone to end the top half of the eighth inning as Nick Lodolo has one inning away from pitching a complete game. O'Neill Cruz to the plate, sends this one to De La Cruz. On the first in, he is out. One away. Nick Lodolo, two outs away from the complete game. Here's the 101 pitch of the game. Is this going to be strike three called at the knees for the 12th strikeout on the day for Nick Lodolo? A dominating performance. Here's Matt Frazier. He's one out away. Frazier sharply hit the steer, and that is it. The Cincinnati Reds have won this game 5-1 to one on the complete game pitched by Nick Lodolo. And we have an achievement. We have won a game wearing our City Connect uniforms, which I really do like them. I, I'm actually a fan of them. In real life, I was kind of, uh, But here in the game, they look real nice. Nick Lodolo is 2-0 to start the season as we defeat the Pittsburgh Pirates 5-1. Looking at the stats here, nobody had multiple hits. It was all guys with just a solo hit, but we had three home runs. Fairchild, Urshela, and Winker all go yard. Nick Lodolo with 12 strikeouts, pitches the complete game. Marco Batista. Strain hamstring in his game today. He will be out for just a few days as we lose the next game against the Pirates 6-2 to two, as Jake Fraley had two hits on the day. Jonathan Nendia with a double. Jake Fraley also with a stolen base as Graham Ashcraft allowed six earn and three and a third innings pitch. Looking at scouting here, Mikey Ishi and our other guy who we are scouting, Chu Tan. As we're about halfway done scouting these guys, they, they both look like they're both good hitters. And I, I don't know where I want to go in this year's draft. I don't know what kind of position I want to go after. You know, I think that we have a really, really good team. Where do we want to go? Do we just go best player available or do we go with somebody? Do we reach on somebody that we believe can have very good offensive upside very early? I don't really know where I want to go in this draft. I want to make the right decision, but I don't want to reach too far. As we win the series against the Pirates, as we win the third game 3-1 to one, as... Jonathan India had a three-hit day. Tyler Stevenson with a two-hit day. We're looking really good right now. Andrew Abbott had his MLB debut, and he goes seven innings, no earned runs. We're definitely going to have to get a game with him very soon as we beat the Giants 8-6 to six in game one of that series. As We'll take a look at the box score here. Three hits for Tyler Stevenson. He's batting 314. Nick Senzel with two hits, and Tyler Stevenson had two home runs in this game as well as we had 10 hits, and Victor Castaneda, had a rough outing. Let's we can say that it was his second start of the year. As we win game two against the Giants as well, as we went eight to two, two hit day for Nick Plummer, who we are gonna have playing a little bit more here. Hunter Green with four and two thirds as he gets the victory. Uh, here we are in the finale against the Giants. We're leading eleven to three. We needed a triple, I believe, with India to get the cycle. I didn't want to jump in as Tyler Stevenson went two for three. CJ Crone with two hits. Urshela with two hits. India goes four for five. Randall Gritchick with two hits. Spencer Steer with two hits. As India had two homers, Steer with one, Stevenson with one, and Stuart Fairchild with a home run. I mean, this offense has been just dominant as we are going to lose the first game against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Fraley with three hits and Crone with two hits. Fairchild had one as Graham Ashcraft struggled again. Only two innings in this game. Definitely going to need him to improve here. He's somebody that we really need to pitch a lot better. Ellie De La Cruz goes one for four as his average is now below 200. Andrew Abbott goes five innings, allowing three earn. Not a bad outing for him at all as Austin Davis struggled and took the loss in that game. It's going to be time to look at scouting again, but before we do that, we drop another one against the Dodgers. We are now at risk of being swept by them as Victor Castaneda goes five innings pitch, two earn runs. And then Austin Davis allowed more earned runs in this outing. So we've learned what we need to know about Mikey Ishii. And he looks decent, but he doesn't look like he's going to be a very top or 
dominant prospect for us. Here's Chu Tan now as he's going to just advance one. Now he's 40, 41 on our board. He's a guy who the potential is probably not going to be great. The overall could be somewhat high. He looks like a very good hitter, but still really don't know what to expect. So here's William T Littier. I believe that's how you would say it. William Littier. He's an 18 year old third baseman prospect. Now I'm looking for that potential generational prospect. Here's Drew Kendall too from Venezuela at shortstop. The last thing we need is another shortstop prospect. But if he was on the board and he was supposed to be a really good prospect, I think you'd have to take him. And then we're going to continue to scout the East region's relief pitchers because I think that I definitely want to go relief pitcher in this upcoming draft. Here we are in the series finale against the Dodgers. We're going to win this one two to nothing as Hunter Green pitched a very good game. Two hits for CJ Krohn on the day. Home runs for Ellie De La Cruz and CJ Crone. As Hunter Green went eight and a third with no earned runs on the day as we go into the first game against the Oakland Athletics. And we killed them 11 to one. The offense looks dominant. 11 runs, 13 hits, but only one home run. It was by Gio Urshela. Nick Lodolo goes six innings, one earned. Justin Dunn finishes that one out. And then seven to four, we beat them in game two. Three hit performance for Tyler Stevenson, now batting 360. Crone and Urshela both with two hits. Tyler Stevenson and Urshela with home runs. Stolen base for Nick Senzel and caught stealing for Spencer Steer as Graham Ashcraft has what I would consider a bounce back performance. Now looking at team stats, we are 12th in average. We are tied for first in runs. And then wait until you guys see this one right here. Home runs. We are in third with 28 home runs. I'm pretty sure we were in dead last all of last season. I don't know what it is about this team as you can look here and look at the stats. I'm not going to talk through every single one of them, but I don't know what it is about this team, but this is a team that I honestly kind of believe can be really good. Therefore, I'm not going to really speed through this season. My initial plan was to kind of make this season quicker than season one because I figured we still wouldn't be that good, but I think we're in a position where we could be potentially NL Central champs. We, we look like a really good team. Hopefully we don't die out. We're 12 and 6 through the first 18 games. If the pitching can perform well and we can and we can hit the way we've been hitting, I think we'll be just fine. I'm kind of excited. Alexis Diaz has turned it around. Seven save opportunities, and he has seven saves. Has not allowed a run yet. And it makes me excited. So the plan is, and if until we start sucking, if we start to not play well, we're going to take this season slow and we're just going to take it two weeks at a time and game time. That is about two weeks at a time and kind of just embrace this season because we look really good. We're in second in the division right now. And at 12 and six through the first 18 games, it doesn't seem like it's a fluke. I think this is a team that could potentially have been built to win. We have a lot of young key pieces that can lead this team to the promised land. So therefore, like I said, we're going to slow this season down and we're going to focus on specific players and just focus on this team because I think this team could be a really good one. Now, if we start to not perform well and we drop 10 games below 500, but as long as we're around that 500 mark at the trade deadline, I think we could be potentially buyers at the trade deadline. So stay tuned as this team looks really, really good. Next episode, you're going to see us try to close out the sweep against the Oakland Athletics and you're going to see Andrew Abbott for the first time. Stay tuned. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.